What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today is going to be a freaking insane awesome day. Two reasons. Number one, it's absolutely gorgeous outside. Number two, you saw the title of the video. We're doing a energy quick release with an energy short hub and a Nardi steering wheel on the FRS today. So I have those super nice Braum seats in there, right? One of my sponsors, Braum Racing. Huge shout out to you guys, by the way, if you're watching this. Absolutely love the seats. You guys killed it. I have the Braum seats and I have the super big 11 inch touchscreen radio. And then I have the stock steering wheel. Hella boring steering wheel. So I'm very, very pumped to get this new Nardi steering wheel into the car. As always, if you want to pick up the steering wheel, the hub, or the quick release, all three are linked down in the description box below. Man, I talk so fast sometimes. All three are linked down in the description box below. So if you want to go pick them up, use those links down there. It helps the channel out, helps me out. Really appreciate that. I will admit I've never messed with removing a stock airbag before, and I'm kind of nervous. They've always kind of scared me, not really sure why, but I'll be sure to bring you along, show you the process of how I'm learning how to remove this, the stock wheel and airbag without it blowing up in my face, and then we can get all the F1 components on, go on a drive, see how freaking beautiful it's gonna be. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. All right, so I'm looking online, trying to figure out how to get the steering wheel installed, and then I just realized other people are going into the same thing, is how to use a the stock cruise control with a steering wheel. I completely spaced that. So I'm watching this video right here. This guy's kind of going through on how to install after we get switches to use cruise control on your car. I'm gonna have this video linked right up in the top right hand corner. So if you guys wanna try to figure out how to use cruise control on your F-Front wheels, go watch this video. This guy explains it pretty well. One more thing I am noticing is I don't know if I have the airbag resistors. Now when you pull the factory airbag off, you have to thorough resistors into the factory wiring so your airbag light does not go off. And I'm not so sure if I ended up ordering those or not or if they were included for free. Oh, good morning, beautiful. Let's pray I have these resistors. There's a beautiful steering wheel I'll be installing on the car. Oh, yes. Those are them right there. So I cannot wait to get this on the FRS. It's gonna add so much to that car. Oh, and by the way, I still have that Subaru Forester back there. It doesn't ever get driven. It's just sitting there. If anyone wants an automatic, yeah, I know it's an automatic. Uh, Subaru Forester XT. It is turboed. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and you can come cop it for a very reasonable price. It's a super awesome car. It just doesn't get driven at all. Like, never. I'm absolutely stoked right now that I have those resistors. Now we can get these. These. Now we can get this FRS interior looking like it should. Because that factory wheel is ugly. So let's get this thing backed up into the center of the shop back here and we can get to work. Okay, let's jump into this tutorial. Number one, anytime you are messing with electronics, this has always kind of been a rule of thumb for me, you're gonna wanna disconnect the battery, like no matter what. You don't want, especially in this case, you don't want that airbag going off. And then number two, it'd be super annoying if you hit the horn, which you're gonna be hitting the horn, and you don't want that horn constantly going off. So let's disconnect this battery using a 10 millimeter wrench. Oh, and by the way, thank you so much for the 13,000 subscribers. I know I hit that a few days ago and I totally spaced it, but thank you for the 13K. We're growing pretty damn fast right now. And by the time this video goes up, we, we're probably almost to 14,000. So I really appreciate that. Much love to everyone that has subscribed to the channel. Holy shit, that engine bay is dirty. That is disgusting. I feel like I just pressure washed that before I went to California. I guess my whole car is kind of dirty. Never mind. All right, we got that battery disconnected. Let's figure out how to get the steering wheel off. So I know number one, you're gonna have to pull that airbag out and then you can remove the steering wheel from there. Yeah, sounds about right. All right, I think I may have figured it out. There's two little holes on the side, right? Usually on WRXs and STIs, you would put like an Allen head in there and unscrew some screws. On this, there's tabs. If you look inside those holes, all you do is push those to the inside of the steering wheel. So this pin over here, the screwdriver will, will go like that and you can see the airbag pop out. Just like so, that was easy. Is there one more? Looks like there's another hole on the bottom, so there may be another pin on the bottom. There's three pins total, two on the side, one on the bottom. Now we have to figure out how to remove all this wiring right here. So this blue wire right here, some plugs. These two are a little more tricky. So what you're gonna wanna do with these two here, this little yellow thing on the inside, use your flat screwdriver. Let's see if I can do this. I can't do that with one hand. Anyways, use your flat screwdriver and pop that little tab up and out. So I got that little yellow tab popped out. Now this clip, ooh comes right off. Before I pull the steering wheel all the way off, 
I see comments and questions all the time on other people's YouTube videos and on the online forums about how much farther the aftermarket assembly is going to stick out past stock. So let's go ahead and give this one a quick measurement. That's right at, that is measuring at two and a half inches. And when I get the new wheel on with the energy hu hub, sometimes I just cannot speak properly. It's so funny. When I get the energy hub on, the energy quick release, and the naughty wheel, I'm gonna measure that one out and compare the difference. Next up, we have the steering wheel itself. So there's a 17 millimeter nut back there. I'm gonna use the impact on that just because I know it's gonna be kind of tight. Um, you're not gonna wanna pull that all the way off. And I actually got this idea from Birdie's video. Just loosen that nut up a little bit and back it off just a little bit so they can get that steering wheel pulled off the steering column. Because if you take that nut all the way off and you rip on the steering wheel to get it off, it's probably gonna hit you in the face. So just Loosen that nut up a little bit, back it off a little bit, but do not take the nut all the way off the wheel or off the steering column. As you can see, you gotta rip on that thing pretty freaking hard to get it off, but thankfully that nut was still on so it didn't smash me in the face. I'm gonna go ahead right now and straighten out my steering wheel all the way just to make sure the new wheel goes on 100% straight as well. Pull this nut off. We're gonna be reusing this nut. So just set it down right there. There's one more little wiring plug in for the cruise control. Uh, just a little white clip you're gonna just connect with your flathead and then everything should slide right on out all right steering wheels off airbag is off let's at least to the side to get the new uh steering wheel hub installed so like you just saw i got the steering wheel off and i'm kind of just over here dicking around with trying to figure out how i could get this cruise control to work on the nardi wheel and i think i could make some sort of bracket to mount the whole cruise control assembly onto the new wheel I think maybe eventually I'm gonna try to figure something out there because it'd be super nice to have my cruise control. I don't mind not having cruise control, but I know she loves to use cruise control. I think all females do. So eventually I'll probably try to figure something else out there. So I figured while I have both these steering wheels off and just chilling here, I'm gonna run downstairs and use a, sh use a shipping scale and weigh them out. I'm really curious to see how much lighter this aftermarket wheel is with all the quick release and everything is ugh, over this heavy ass one. I'm gonna guess like two to three pounds lighter. Let's go see. So the stock steering wheel weighs six pounds, three ounces. I don't know if you guys can see that down there. And this whole assembly weighs in at four pounds, one ounce. So that is a solid two pounds lighter. Let's get our cute little hub installed on the car. Before we do that, before we do that, we need our resistors. So you have two resistors, grab both of them. Let's run over to the car, get these things on. This right here, this little thing that's still on here is a clock spring. Don't mess with that for a lot of different reasons. Number one, you just, you don't need to. Number two, it controls a lot of stuff. So just leave it be. I mean, you can turn it a little bit here and there, but don't try to pull it off the car because you you just don't want to. Just don't do it, all right? All right. Grab your resistors right here. Obviously we have two resistors, one for each of those airbag wires. And all this is gonna do is make sure our airbag does not, or the airbag light does not go off when we turn the car on. So these just plug right into focus. So there's two little holes on each one. These resistors plug into those holes, kind of like so. Now we're not gonna have any airbag lights go off on our uh, cluster or the dash. That'll be super nice. Now, next thing we need to get this on the car so a couple things to note here number one of course the energy wants to face up also there's a little pin see that little white marking that is going to face up as well everything that is right here all these wires and everything they're going to tuck on the back side of this steering wheel or not the steering wheel on the back side of this hub my bad so we can go ahead and get this thing on the car we straightened out the steering wheel before so we know the front wheels are 100 percent straight and that energy and that tab are going to go straight up so to the freaking roof. Just kidding guys, come back over to your steering wheel and we're gonna need this wiring right here for our horn, unless you don't care about a horn. So what we're gonna do, grab our flathead screwdriver and unplug that, get that wiring back on the car. Okay. That was fucking awesome. My door closed, grabbed my tripod and smashed the tripod into the car. Hopefully that didn't read my wrap. And why will you not stay open? I think we're fine. We're fine, yes. Okay, back to work. All you gotta do is plug it back in right here. That clip 
goes in there. The only wire we need from that plugin is this blue one here. That's for the horn. This white one down here is for the cruise control. So you can leave that unplugged. Am I the only one who does that, by the way? I've always wondered. Socks and sandals. Socks and sandals gang. If, you, if you're part of that gang, hashtag gang down below. It's time to get this hub on. So the only thing we need to poke through this hole up top is this blue wire. Everything else tucks in the backside of this hub. A lot of wiring to tuck back there. I don't see how that's gonna fit. But I mean, other people do it, so I can do it. Kind of just cramming it behind. All right, these resistors fall out hella easy. I'm actually gonna electrical tape them on because I don't want the resistors to randomly fall out as I'm driving and the airbag light come on and freak me out. So I'm just gonna throw a little electrical tape and hold these resistors into these plugs. I would highly recommend you guys do the same. Okay, let's try again. I'm gonna grab our 17 millimeter nut and get it back on there and just hit it lightly with an impact and then we can torque it down with the torque wrench. If you guys have one. If you don't have one, just crank it down. You'll be fine. Not with an impact, but with a ratchet. The whole time you're installing this, make sure that DAW is facing up. The energy logo is on top facing straight up. You don't want to get this all done and have it off to the side. That'd be a pain in the ass. So just make sure everything's lined up. There's always the DAW on on the energy hub and the energy quick release. So make sure those are up all times. Torque spec on this nut is 29 foot pounds. You definitely don't want this nut falling off though. And I think I have a long enough extension on here as well. Jesus. You guys hear that? That means we're good. All right, from here on out, it's super, it should be super, super easy. Let's grab, hold on. I'm gonna straighten this back out. When I tightened it, it kind of moved. All right, we're straight up again. Next up, we need, what do we need? Let's go to the table. So that is our quick, quick release. I'm gonna actually bolt the steering wheel up. There's always this dot right here that goes straight up. And so that'll go like that. Let's get some nuts or some screws on here. I'm just gonna hand tighten it for now. You know what? I'm just gonna throw two screws in for now. We don't need all of them in yet. Just to, just to test it out. Next up is actually gonna be installing this little, I don't know, I guess you could call it an adapter. So I already have this plate on here. That's the ground plate for a horn. As you know, on wiring, there's always a positive and a negative or a ground and a power. Ground being the uh, negative. So this plate is gonna act as a ground. And then that blue wire that we fed through the steering wheel plugs in right here. And that's for the horn. Like I said earlier, if you don't want a horn, you can disregard all this information I'm giving you right now. But the next step is going to be, get, is going to, be to get this thing bolted on. And we should have some screws that they included, all six of them. Make sure they are their proper size. Cool, cool. All right, let's go get this thing on the car. Actually, here's what we're doing. You guys, can you guys see me fine? Hopefully you can see me fine. Blue wire's coming through here. Um, why is there an extra black wire here? What the hell? I'm confused, guys. I'm very confused. I don't know if either one could be a ground. I guess we could test it. I don't know. How easy would that be to pull off? What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna do what I think I need to do. Okay, that doesn't even fit on that plug-in. Is there more wiring that I'm not seeing here? Give me a sec. Okay, why are these different freaking plugins? I'm having a little issue here if you can't see. This wiring plug-in is smaller than that one, so they don't fit. And now we have this black wire. Am I dumb? What the hell, I can freaking build damn near a whole car and I can't even get a steering wheel on? I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go ask Google what to do here. Hold on. All right, so here's the current scoop. To use an aftermarket steering wheel, as far as I am reading online right now, you need some sort of weird harness to use the horn. So I guess for now, included in this tutorial, since I wanna get this wheel on today, we're not gonna be using a horn. There's, I got this far, so I, I connected the battery, and when I touch this wire to this, as you can hear, the horn works. I am not that good with electronics. Um, I will admit that right now. So I'm not sure how to wire this to this, to the other 48 million wires. There's not 48, there's like three other wires. I'm not sure how to wire it all to where the horn only works when you press on the horn button itself. So I am just going to leave this disconnected for now. And in the future, if I can figure out how to get this to work properly, I'll make it a little update video and explain to you guys how to use it properly. I know with the Works Bell Hub, they include a harness to connect all these wires for a horn, but on here, they don't. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Either way, let's get back to work. I'm just gonna tuck this wire back up in here. Actually, that might be an issue. 
Okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this hub back off and just take this wiring harness off. Okay, the next step is to get this little part on right here. So this is part of the quick release. Like I said, this dot right here, when we, when we tied up the steering wheel, it kind of turned the wheels. So this, make sure this dot on here is lining up with that dot right there. And we're just gonna take all of these six screws, screw these on, tighten them up. The Allen wrench you need is a three millimeter Allen wrench. Now you can take your steering wheel. We already installed the quick release on it. So go ahead, decompress that. How you do that is you, you pull back on this lever back here and there's a little there's a little tab on top. You're gonna push that in or a little button on top. So that's on. Now we can tighten up all the screws for this. Last thing you need to do is put on the horn cap. It's a nice little finishing touch. Get it centered up and you should just be able to press it on there. Just like that guys. That is a beautiful freaking steering wheel. Wow. As you can see just by looking at it, this thing is sticking out quite a bit farther than the stock one. But this is the moment of truth. The stock one was what, two and a half inches I believe. This one I'm guessing like five. This one, it's called, it's a little more than five and a half. Let's call it five and a half though, right on the dot. So that is three inches farther out. That means it's sitting, that means when you're driving down the road, this steering wheel is gonna be three inches closer to you compared to the stock one. And that's honestly, for me being kind of a big guy, I'm sick, about six foot, about 200 pounds, usually chilling around 200 pounds. I'm trying to think of like imagining driving it. Let's go on a little drive actually. Let's go on a little drive. Well, number one, I already have the battery plugged in. If you guys have not plugged in your battery already, make sure you plug that in. Let's see if this thing starts. Maybe it's not plugged all the way in. Hold on. My car definitely is not starting. The battery definitely was not plugged all the way in. It feels really freaking nice. It feels really nice. Let's go on a little drive. I don't know if you can see how close this is to me now. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go home, pull off this quick release assembly, and then bolt the steering wheel right to the short hub up here and see if that makes it much closer. It should make it like two much it should make it like two inches closer. I really do like how it looks. It feels awesome, it looks awesome. It's just there's so many things that you do away with when you put the steering wheel on the car that I'm not sure if it's even worth it right now. I'm not honestly not even sure. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys Put a steering wheel in a car and you lost your horn, your airbag, your cruise control, and it sits super close to you and you're not sure if you like how close it sits, would you continue to run it? Um, I, don't, I don't really know. Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get this short hub off here. Or not the short hub, the quick release. It's nice to have, I guess. That's dope, right? That's super cool. Honestly, with a quick release, I don't even know how often I'd pull my, my wheel off. I'm trying to think of a scenario or a situation where I'd actually need to pull my steering wheel off my car. Maybe working on it. I guess working on it would be super nice. Maybe at car shows and whatnot, that'd be dope. And for the clout, if you get clout when you have a quick release, I'm kind of thinking so. Okay, never mind. The steering wheel does not line up with that at all. That would be nice. I could, I could run that, but seeing how it doesn't line up, then I guess I'm kind of screwed. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm gonna throw this all back together and I guess I'll run it how it was for a day or two if I if I can't stand it. I'm just gonna go back to the stock wheel, I guess. All right, bros, I got the wheel back on. I'm gonna run it for a while, for a few days. If I can't stand it, I'm gonna pull it back off to the stock wheel on. This thing does look absolutely freaking sick. I love how it feels, I love how it looks. There's just those few things that I'm hating about it. So like I said, I'm gonna run it for a while, but let me show you guys how this thing looks. It looks absolutely amazing in the car. I feel like it really adds a lot of, I don't know, has a lot of coolness, coolness factor to the inside of this whip. So it's pretty dope. Yeah, let me show you a little edit right now. All right, bros, I'm gonna go ahead, wrap up this video right here. Really hope you enjoyed it, I know it's kind of a weird video because I got a badass wheel into the car and I'm not so sure if I like it. I'll keep you updated on whether or not I pull it out. Just stay tuned to the channel. If you guys aren't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button right up in the corner up there so you can see if I end up ditching this wheel or not. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to pick this wheel up, I'll have the wheel, the hub, the quick release all linked down in the description box below. Damn, it's getting bright outside.
So if you guys want to go pick those up, use those links. It helps the channel out and helps me provide these badass videos for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like I said, hit that subscribe button. It'll be up in the corner right now, not earlier. It'll be up there now. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned to the channel for all the badass builds coming out. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.